This restaurant has a, uh, a very special feature, and that is you can roll your own cigarettes. Pass me that little, little show and don't she thinks. So uh, they give you your tobacco here, and then it comes with rolling papers and a match. No, that's fresh tobacco, dude. Really? Yeah, it's not a prop. That's pretty cool. Hey, Lowen, this is Lowey6 here with another video, and if you didn't watch my last video, you should know that Winston and I are actually filming our second season of our TV show, Conquering Northern China. I can't say where I am right now, but if you're clever, you'll probably know where we are. Now, I actually wanted to, to pose a question to you guys. Imagine you are a Chinese person, you're traveling around the USA, and you try to book into a hotel, and the clerk at the hotel desk says, I'm sorry, but we don't allow Chinese people to stay at our hotel. That'd be pretty ridiculous, wouldn't it? But that's something that we fall victim to pretty much all the time here in China, when we try to travel around and stay at different hotels. And this is because there's this really kind of archaic Soviet-era law in China that restricts foreigners from staying in certain hotels. And I want to tell you why it came about and actually what you can do to kind of prevent that or avoid it in the future. So why can't foreigners stay in some hotels in China? Well, actually in the 1970s, China, the Chinese government made this law in an effort to kind of keep Chinese uh, people away from foreign influence. And we know back then under like Mao's influence and stuff, things were kind of more closed off or a lot more closed off than they are now. So it kind of served as a barrier between people that were over here on diplomatic missions or over here for tourism, et cetera, et cetera. Now, also, it also served a way to kind of register foreigners to be able to track them around the country. So what you had was a situation where every single Chinese person around the country, if they wanted to travel somewhere, it was kind of a really, really big deal. And they had to use their ID card or their ID number to register in every place that they go. Now, foreigners were not exempt from this at all. And actually, the Chinese government really, really wanted to keep track of people that were hopping around the country and where they were staying. So they had the system that you basically have to register your ID number. Now, a lot of places that you go actually have something called a PSB or a Public Security uh, Bureau. Actually, every single town or every single area you go to has one of these. And a foreigner is required by law to register their ID or their passport number with the police security, Public Security Bureau in every single place that they go. So the Chinese government can kind of know where you're going, what you're doing there, and if they need to find you for any particular reason, or even for safety concerns, they can actually track you down. So a lot of hotels around China don't have the capabilities to be able to punch in a uh, passport number as an ID number. So oftentimes, you'll go to a hotel and they'll say, sorry, we can't really accept foreign friends, as they often say. Now, of course, most big cities have hotels that will allow you to stay there. And this is, again, goes back to the day when Chinese people didn't have so much money. So foreign tourists that came to China back in the 70s and 80s would spend a lot more money to stay in a big international hotel. Now, if you go to the big cities today, there's oftentimes some cheaper chains like Seven Days Inn or Home Inn or places like this. They actually have this nationwide system to be able to register your ID number or passport number with the Public Security Bureau so you don't actually have to go to the little town's PSB and actually register yourself. So, very, very helpful, very useful, but again, a kind of a backwards law. Now, it's not always so simple though, because even in some of the bigger uh, cities, oftentimes you'll go to a cheaper hotel and they won't have the capability to register a foreigner. And in, especially in smaller towns and some sen more sensitive regions as well, the hotels will have absolutely no way to register you or just flat out refuse you. Even if they do have the capabilities to do so, they don't want the responsibility of having to take care of a foreigner if, in case something happens or they don't want to run your numbers over to the PSB. So as you know, we are filming our second season of our TV show, Conquering Northern China, and we had no issues in the first province of Shandong province. We stayed in some really tiny little uh, villages, basically, and nobody was bothered to kind of register us. We also stayed in some bigger hotels and some medium-sized hotels that had no issues as well. But as soon as we got off the ferry, we were posed with a big, big, big problem, and that was when we were getting off the ferry, we weren't able to ride around the big city of Dalian, which is the biggest city in Liaoning province, which was our next stop. So imagine us arriving at like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. We get our motorcycles off the ferry and there's a blanket ban on motorcycles and police checkpoints everywhere. Well, not only will we lose our motorcycle, but potentially get arrested. The whole TV show is canceled. Everything is over. So we actually had to find a way to kind of skirt the areas and ride our motorcycles around through the middle of the night. What we decided was actually not to stay in the city just in case that we ran into issues with losing our bikes, etc., etc. So riding through the desolate kind of cold nights of Dali and trying to avoid police and things like this and running into dr drunk Russian people that didn't speak a word of English and uh, trying to just escape this really, really nerve-wracking situation, it was our first introduction into Liaoning province. 
Now, of course, we didn't, we couldn't see how beautiful it was there because it was pitch black at night and blisteringly cold. But we rode through the night. And we noticed that it was very, very desolate outside the city. So we were a little bit worried that we we're going to run into a situation where, if we had to stay in a small town that night because it was too dangerous to ride at night. At least we'd be in a place where motorcycles were legal, but we might be in a situation where they won't accept foreigners into hotels. However, when we looked up on our phone, right as our intercoms died so we couldn't talk to each other anymore, we found this little town in uh, Leoning called Pulan Bien. And we had never heard of it before, but it was of decent size. Now, when we showed up there at like 12.30 or 1 o'clock at night, we, uh, we actually checked the GPS and saw that there was a seven days in. Now, seven days in is something that Winston and I rely on throughout the entire country because it's a reliable, fairly cheap, 25 bucks a night type hotel chain that definitely, definitely allows foreigners to stay there. So, super, super relieved to be able to find one of these. Now, we called ahead and they said, yes, we have rooms. Now, as we showed up, it actually turned out to be a fake seven days in hotel chain. It had all of the logos and stuff around it, but completely, completely fake. Now, this is the only hotel that we could see that would theoretically allow foreigners to stay. And when we tried to show up there, they told us, oh, you're foreigners? Well, you can't stay here. We can't register foreigners. So out of desperation, we're freezing cold in this new place that we don't even know, middle of the night. We said, well, can you help us find a hotel that allows foreigners to stay there? They said that there was only one. There was only one hotel that allowed foreigners to stay there, and that was called the French Hotel. Now, as we showed up there, it was kind of this really hideous, gaudy, baroque hotel, and uh, yeah, we didn't really know if it was going to work out because the parking lot was completely full. And as we walked in, it turned out it was completely booked full, so we had absolutely nowhere to stay. The hotel was nice enough to recommend the next town over, which was only about an hour away. So at this point, we had arrived at the next town about 3 a.m. Through the night, dangerous truck roads, tr trucks trying to run us off the road, you know, to complete their route overnight and stuff. And we show up at this town, again, that only had one hotel that would allow foreigners. It was a chain called Home Inn, which is very similar to the Seven Days Inn. Thank the Lord they allowed us to stay there. But they had no parking for the motorcycles, so we had to just let them kind of sit on the road overnight. And uh, there was a good chance that they'd get stolen. Obviously they didn't because we're continuing filming, we're continuing this uh, this trip and everything. But that's not the only scenario where Winston and I were kind of denied staying at hotels. So fortunately our experience in Liaoning province, filming the entire province, was not all negative. It turned out to be absolutely gorgeous place. Beautiful rice terraces which were very strange to see up north in northern China where we are now. Um, but not only that, we traveled across the entire place. We saw some amazing, amazing sights and we met some really, really cool and amazing people. Very, very friendly, awesome food and all that kind of stuff. But that being said, to get back on topic of not being able to stay in hotels, Winston and I have been kind of thwarted multiple times throughout our travels through China. Uh, for example, one time when we were filming in our first season down in Guizhou province, there's a lot of ethnic minorities there and the government tends to be quite sensitive about filming or being around the ethnic minority situation because of uh, civil unrest and things like that. So there's a lot of towns around there where we had to drive two, three hours to the next town to find another hotel or a bigger city because they just wouldn't allow us to stay there. Sometimes the hotels are very friendly and they're like, we really wish we could allow this, but we're gonna get in trouble if they find out you're here. Winston and I have both been in situations where they allow us to stay there and it turns out that the, the police get wind of it 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, you end up with a knock on your door and the police ask to see your documents and actually forcibly remove you from that town. Never ended up in jail or anything, but have to drive or ride to the next town or next big city. So it's quite frustrating, it's quite unnerving, to be honest. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's multiple situations where we had to deal with this. When I was filming the uh, dog meat thing in Yulin, we weren't allowed to stay anywhere in the entire city because of the controversy surrounding the entire dog meat festival. Um, and yeah, multiple times, even when I'm with my wife, she'll be able to stay everywhere, obviously, because she can use her Chinese ID. But oftentimes, you know, I'll kind of let her go in first and book a room for herself, and then I kind of sneak in, get caught, forced to leave. So it is a very, very strange and archaic law that prevents foreigners from really having a backwoods or off the beaten path traveling experience here. Um, it has kind of bit us a few times, and you can't always rely on kind of just showing up to a place and finding a place to stay. There's obviously things like Airbnb that kind of get around this. Uh, it's kind of in the gray area. So in some of these areas where we knew we wouldn't be allowed to stay, we managed to find Airbnbs that would take us in, and they didn't really uh, bother registering us with the police and stuff, which allowed us to film with not too much hassle. So kind of third-party apps like Airbnb and all these kind of uh, couch surfing and all this kind of stuff allows you to have an easier experience traveling around China. But 
Uh, a little tip for you guys, most chain hotels will take you in. Um, if you go on ctrip.com or one of these places, they'll actually say in Chinese on there or in English that foreigners are allowed to stay at a certain hotel. So you can find out, and I would usually call ahead before you actually book it or show up to make sure that you're allowed to stay there because it can be a massive waste of time to ride or drive to a place and then just be refused at the door. Um, this trip is going swimmingly for us so far. We have just exited some very sensitive regions that I cannot talk about at this very moment. Um, but I really hope you guys wish us luck. We're about halfway through our trip right now. You guys are gonna absolutely love the show. We have seen some amazing life-changing things and experienced things that I've never experienced before living here eight years now. So I really hope you enjoyed the video, La Winners, and I will catch you on the next one.